Let's open with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you. Lord, we pray for wisdom. We pray for healing. We pray for strength and guidance for each and every one of your children. Father, the world is confusing at times. It can be discouraging so easily when our focus gets taken off you, your person, your promises, your promises to always be with us and never leave us, never forsake us. Lord, we pray for those who are sick, who are struggling physically or emotionally. Father, please just fill us with your spirit. Fill us with your comfort. Strengthen us, Lord. Help us to know what to do, how to do it, when we should go, and when we should just remain still and know deep in the very depths of our heart, our minds, our souls, that you are God and you're ever present and we're never ever alone. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. I just wanted to offer up a word of encouragement and a reminder to all the saints the importance of staying focused on the Lord, the importance of praying one for another. In Jeremiah 32, starting in verse 26, it says, Then came the word of the Lord unto Jeremiah, saying, Behold, I am the Lord your God. I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? And that's a rhetorical question. There is nothing too hard for our God. And that is really easy to forget. It can be hard to remember when we're struggling physically or when the situations, the trials in life kind of compound themselves or our health begins to fail, whatever it may be. We can lose sight of the, the person and the power of God. Second Corinthians 1, verses, starting verse 2, says, Grace be to you, that's you, believer, and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, God of all comfort. The true source of our comfort, our peace, our rest comes from God and not from within ourselves. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort, who comforted, comforteth us in all our tribulations, our sufferings, our afflictions, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of or from God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. And whether we be afflicted, if we're suffering that tribulation, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is the effectual, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer. And whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. The backdrop of this life and the situations that we deal with is the future hope, expectation, and promises of God. The truth and the reality of what things are, what things will be, the temporary versus the eternal, the suffering versus the healing and the comfort, the recognition of the, the fallen state of humanity, of the world, of the creation versus the restoration, that which is made new that will come to the future. We contrast these things because that is where the source comes from God, our comfort, our hope, our expectation is future. It's not in this world. We walk by faith, reliance upon God, not by sight. And what you'll find is if you think you are having troubles, and I'm not saying that you aren't because you are. If you think your life is uh, hard to deal with at times, go talk to a neighbor. Talk to a family, friend, relative, and you'll see there's con everyone is dealing with something. No one is exempt from uh, 
having a, a complex, complicated life in which you're trying to balance and deal with things. But we need to remember to pray because God does hear our prayers. If you have put your faith in Christ alone as your only hope of eternal life and received his free gift of salvation offered by his grace through faith. And as James reminds us, a book written to believers of the practical in this life, he says in James chapter 5, beginning in verse 14, Is there any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. And let them pray over him, anointing his, him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith, reliance upon God, shall save or heal, deliver the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up, and if he have committed sins, <coughs> they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that you may be healed, made whole. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. There is power in prayer. We are pleading and calling upon God, who owns all things, who is above all things, in strength, power, sovereignty, dominion. That's what sovereignty means, rule. He is the God of all, King of kings, Lord of lords. And we're asking him a petition of our heart. There's brothers and sisters in Christ right now dealing with a lot of physical uh, problems. And those physical uh, things can affect the spiritual. We are uh, joined to our spirit, our flesh. We, we can't divide those things. One inherently affects the other. And they need our prayer. I can always use prayer. You can always use prayer. There's always something that um, can be prayed for. I remember how easy it is to forget to pray. You'll tell someone, yeah, I'll pray for you. They'll ask, will you pray for me about this or this? And you'll say yes. And uh, I got to where I would write notes, and that was really helpful. And then I met a, um, a believer who was very um, passionate for the Lord. And it actually kind of caught me off guard that when Prayer was asked for, whether it was in person, uh, over the, the telephone, the conversation would stop at that request for prayer, and prayer began then. And uh, it was so comforting and enlightening to me to see that, that fellowship, that immediate reaction to the request the request for prayer. And uh, it changed my perspective on prayer and how important it is to stop as soon as you can and make that prayer request because when someone asks you, they have a need. And that prayer is um, very important to fulfilling that need. So just remember when someone asks for prayer, it's like asking for a drink of water. It's like asking for food for hunger, asking for help from falling down. It's an immediate need. And the prayer, I believe, the best approach is to immediately pray that prayer. Uh, God hears it, and that's so comforting to know that our our voices don't bounce off the ceiling. They don't just fade in into the the wilderness but they go directly to to God and he hears us and even when we can't form the words in a perfect sense we can articulate it to where it sounds good he searches the motives and intents of the hearts he hears the heart and he knows perfectly what the need is Paul dealt with infirmity Jesus was a man of many sorrows. He, he endured many things. This life has a lot of struggles for everyone. It really does. But the focus for the Apostle Paul, when he prayed to have that infirmity removed, 
was a reminder that this unmerited favor, this unmerited kindness, this unmerited love that God has for us is sufficient. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 said, He said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect, complete in weakness. The backdrop of his strength is our weaknesses, and it exalts and magnifies and really shows just how strong he is. Most gladly, therefore, I will rather glory in my infirmities. Actually, glory in seeing God's strength exalted through our weakness, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in, in infirmities. That is a, a perspective from God, and that's not a natural inclination to actually rejoice in our trials. Um, but it is biblical in reproaches, in necessities or needs, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. God works through our weak selves. It's a whole different perspective from the natural view of things. One prayer that as we see the world fulfilling Bible prophecy and, and leaning away from God more and more is the promise of his return regardless of the timing of your um, in time view, he is returning. And I'll echo Revelation twenty two twenty that says, He which testifieth these things saith, This is our Lord Jesus. Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. And I pray also, Revelation 22, 21, to each and every one of you, that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Psalm 106, 1 says, Praise ye the Lord. O give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endureth forever. And I'll end with this, Psalm 46, 10 and 11, and this is hard at times because it really is an expression of faith, trusting and relying solely upon God to do what is right, to do what is good, to fulfill his promises. There are times that we just need to be still. If you're struggling with an addiction today, if you're struggling with pain today, if you're struggling with things that are beyond your ability to correct them, take this time and make Jesus Christ and God's word the focus and the well that you're trying to draw from for comfort and healing and peace. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob he is our refuge. It's not in the hopes of this world. It's in the promises fulfilled by the person God, Jesus Christ, and what he said he will do for us, and that he's always with us, Emmanuel, God with us. We can never overemphasize prayer or the very word of God, reading and taking in the word of God. Let the word of Christ dwell, the word of Christ, what the Bible proclaims. Dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Whatsoever you do in word or deed, whatever it is you're doing, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Never forget the source of our comfort, the provider of our comfort. Never forget everyone's dealing with something. And never think for an instance that your prayers aren't heard. Open your heart to the Lord. 
bring the needs of yourself and others to him. And then trust that he's good to his word because he is. So if you're struggling out there, feel free to put a prayer request. It doesn't have to be overly personal. Uh, it can be whatever you need it to be. In the comments below, reach out to other saints. Maybe share this with them. And thank the God of all creation, the God of all mercies, the God of all comfort, the Lord of all, tells us to pray without ceasing. And he's ready to hear your prayers for your needs or the needs of others. That truth should bring great comfort to each and every one of us. So till next time, I want to say take care, God bless, and keep your eyes fixed on Jesus Christ and his word.